Hello. Hello. Welcome back to What the Deaf Deaf. podcast. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Hmm. We got a lot of questions asked by our listeners about wanting to clarify after the new series came out on Netflix talking about the deaf community called Deaf You. It just so happens that they use the term elitism without really explaining in depth with our deaf community and the true meaning of that term. And it kind of left you guys hanging. And so now you want to know our perspective on that. And whew, it's tough. It's a yeah, really tough, sticky topic. But we do want to have this conversation. And again, remember, we are only two deaf women. And our perspectives might be different than other deaf people. And maybe we're not right without having that actual definition in our, in our community. But we are two different deaf women with different backgrounds giving our perspective on that term. And we're just exploring this topic together right now. And we're unpacking and discussing this, trying to figure out what that term is ourselves and having an open dialogue about this. So I kind of want to put this out there and ask you, do you consider yourself elite? I personally still really struggle with that, um, with that question or how to answer that, that am I elite? Because to me, that word can be interpreted in so many different ways. And it really depends on how you want to grab the term on the positive side of the stick or the negative side of the stick. And so again, for me, I want to deny that I'm elite in the negative perspective because I do come from a deaf family. And okay, so to clarify, from my understanding, elitism is mostly geared towards deaf people who come from a deaf family or they were basically born to the culture and language. And so I obviously was born from in a deaf family and my family comes from a small deaf community. So I remember growing up, I went to a deaf school and everyone knew me as the wire's daughter. I was never labeled as Carly first. It was always, you know, my big brother's little sister or my, my grandpa's, you know, granddaughter, or it always connected to my last name wires within a small community in Nebraska. But then I graduated and I went to Gaida University and I had that embedded in me and of being kind of the leader in a small deaf community to a university where absolutely no one knew who I was. The wire's name did not exist. It was not well known within a larger deaf community. So that took me back a little bit. I'm like, okay, so now for you to ask me if I'm a Lee, I'm like, well, you know what? I guess it depends on where you are. In Nebraska, I might be viewed as elite, but in DC or in a larger deaf community, I don't, I'm not quite sure where I stand with that word. That's interesting because when I went to Gallaudet, I never really was aware of elitism or I mean, I really don't think that term even existed when we went to Gallaudet. And after watching Deaf You and seeing that term being labeled as elite, I was like, oh, Okay, when I was at Gallaudet, I just thought it was the popular people or it was just people in the deaf community who were well known. I didn't realize that, oh, maybe it was because they came from a deaf family. I just kind of went along with it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's just popular. I wonder if maybe you didn't recognize it because you played sports. So with you being a star player within the university, you are already... (sighs) You already have the access to just kind of go along with it without recognizing that there are actually specific groups who reject other people within the community. And I had a really interesting conversation with a friend of mine about that term, and they brought up a really good point. And they said, There's, there are two different groups of people who are considered elite. There's one group who says, yep, I know I'm an elite. I come from the deaf community. And they continue those behaviors of putting people down or rejecting others within the community. While there's the other group that says, yeah, I'm an elite and I come from a deaf community, but I, they're so welcoming and inclusive and very supportive. And they don't continue those behaviors that the other group does. And that's the same with, you know, in general, popular people. There's a lot of different types of popular people. There's different layers. 
there might be a person who's extremely popular and they initiate the bullying by putting other people down who don't come from the same background as that person. Or there's another person say that they're popular, but they're really, they love to interact with other people who are not from the same background. And that really parallels with the deaf community. It's just that what makes us so different is because we have a culture that separates us into different categories of elitism. Yeah. And I'm wondering, because after Deaf You came out, that term elitism seemed to have a lot of negative connotations with it. And how does that make you feel? Because I feel like it could be perceived in both ways. But right now, it's just it's a sticky topic to talk about because it seems so negative. And that's what kills me. And that's why I struggle with answering that question because here's the thing. I would love to think that being an elite can be a very positive thing because my family, I I came from a multi-generational deaf family and we grew up fighting for our rights, our language, and we're oftentimes deprived, discriminated, oppressed by society and People who are born to the culture truly fought for our rights and for our culture. And we are the reason why we have this culture in the first place. Yeah, that's a huge positive thing. It is. And now for people to shift that perspective and make it a negative thing and view us as if we have this advantage. And unfortunately, there are some people who do that. And, you know, they carry on that reputation without really giving back to the community. And it makes it seem so negative, but not everybody who identifies themselves as an elite or come from the deaf community behaves like that. Yeah. And I think it's because of society and who decides who's an elite and who decides if it's a positive or negative thing. It's society. And right now with social media, with easy access, with a lot of people having that quick reaction to everything, it makes it harder for that shift to reach for the positive side of everything. And I remember a cast member from Deaf U who used that term elite, those elite people. They even did a post and had to explain and said that wasn't their intention to make it seem so negative because it shouldn't always be that way. It was just, I think, in that heat of the moment where, you know, they got so frustrated with certain people who reject and put down people, they decided to use that. And they didn't realize that that actually impacts the greater community, the greater deaf community. And they had to reach back out and apologize and clarify because society puts us in a position where we, you know, we want to instantly pull people down instead of supporting them and rallying behind them. And so again, that term should not always be used in a negative way. And it's funny because I even had this conversation with my dad and I explained about the term elitism and what's going on in our world. And my dad was like, oh, so technically I wouldn't be considered an elite. I was born hearing, but with his upbringing, his whole entire life, I mean, he's been a huge part of the deaf community, but in his eyes, he was like, well, that's kind of true. Cause I remember in my time, people who were born from a deaf family, they had a better they had better opportunities in life than I did by being born from a hearing family because, you know, in his time, they didn't have access to technology. They didn't have access to social media. His family didn't have the ability to expose him more to become successful in life other than just having him attend a deaf school. So in his eyes, he was like, yeah, those people who are born from deaf families, I mean, they became extremely successful. They're the ones who became presidents of deaf organizations, or they attended Gaggett University, and I just became a farmer over here. <laughs> but he is successful in his life. And for him to view elitism as not a negative thing, it's just that they were born from a deaf community and they have those opportunities to become leaders in our community. And so it really hit me. I was like, oh. My own dad sees this in a positive light. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing for me to consider myself as an elite. Yeah. And again, it's society and how easy it is to minimize people and not realize the other side of it and how tough it is for people too. 
And I think that's why a lot of people are so conflicted within the deaf community or just in general, not only the deaf community, but the world. There's a lot of quote unquote cancel culture that's going on, a lot of attraction to focusing on the negative side of social media and seeing your dad explain his perspective in a beautiful way. It shows that elitism can be a label for people who are leaders who really roll out their sleeves and support the community and want to represent us in a beautiful light. So if we had more of those kinds of people thinking that way, this world would be a beautiful one. For sure. And it's funny because I look back to my high school years and being quote unquote popular, it put the responsibility on me to be a leader in my school. And (laughs) I mean, I was one of very few students within my deaf school who had a deaf family. And so I was being pressured by staff, unfortunately staff, that I needed to be quote unquote, a role model for every student in my school. And so because of that, I was made to be friends with everyone. I was made to not made to, but felt the need to represent my family well. And my school always compared me to my brother. My brother went to the same school and he happened to be the, you know, the such a good guy (laughs) in, in my school. And so everyone would always say, why can't you be like your brother? And that fed me the idea of, okay, I need to maintain this good reputation of for my family in school. And then I went to Gaeta University and I literally became a nobody. And looking back at my college years, <laughs> I mean, hopefully everybody has their, you know, moments where they're like, why did I just do that? But, you know, for me, I was craving to have that life where I was a leader again at Gaeta University. I ended up losing myself instead of just being true to myself and saying, yeah, I came from a small deaf community. I tried so hard to be friends with people who were considered an elite. Because for me, I was thinking, okay, well, if they're the elite group and I'm friends with them, I will be a part of that group without really thinking, hey, I can just be my own kind of elite in my own way, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And I felt like you lost yourself within that because the pressure you had prior. Right. And again, it is not their fault. No. The people who came from a big family and had that reputation at Gaida, it's not their fault. It's my fault. I made those choices and I made those decisions. But to think that they wanted to be my friend because of an elite reputation, instead of just being good, authentic people and thinking that I will be their great friend without having to constantly prove to them in that way, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it completely does. And thank you so much for sharing that because it's not an easy topic to talk about. And And I think every community every school in general in society has that. I mean, it's not just within the deaf community. I mean, we have movies about it. It's called Mean Girls. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But again, with the mainstream world, having that term popularity, it's like, what kind of popular person do you want to be? What do you want to represent? Knowing that you have that reputation or that platform to make a difference, how do you want to make the difference? And that's also within the deaf community too. How do we as deaf individuals want to make a difference within our own community and make it a positive one and a beautiful one? Yeah. And so. And that's why I'm, I'm thankful that the term elitism happened. And it couldn't have happened at a better time, 2020, where I had to take a step back, stay home in quarantine and unpack. And then that term happened. And I was like, oh, okay. So I had to unpack, look back at my college years, look back to my high school years, what I did and why did I do what I did? And how can I shift that to become a better person by recognizing those and understanding my identity as an elite and what area I'm in. And so if I go back to Nebraska, how can I become an elite in a positive way by inviting people into our community and continuing to strive for our rights and push to preserve our language? And if I were to go into a big deaf community, how can I just continue being me and advocate for the deaf community? And so it just, I'm just thankful for that term to happen within our deaf community because it really allows me to unpack and reflect on 
my past and going forward, what do I want to do with that term? And how can we change that into a positive way? Yeah. And we've already done that so far by having this discussion with each other and with our circle of deaf friends and to truly analyze it in a positive, safe way and to really reveal ourselves and who we are and where we come from and why we do the things we do. And it's so powerful. And I can't wait to get out of quarantine and continue this conversation with so many other people within our deaf community who want to have empathy and open discussions. In person. In person. I miss that so much. But again, it's what makes society a beautiful one where hopefully we can have these kinds of conversations related with not only with elitism, but with being human and how to approach things that might seem a bit sticky, but have an open discussion. And also the topic bullying. I mean, it's a big thing nowadays, and it breaks my heart to even consider that, that bullying is a big thing and it affects so many students out there today. And that kind of parallels with the word elitism sometimes. And we see people bullying another group of people because they feel the pressure with society that they have to fit into this position of power. And so, again, and how quickly and easy it is for someone to bully someone now because of technology that we have. And I can't imagine being in high school today with the easy access to technology, social media, and hiding behind a computer screen and bullying somebody. It's just my heart. So we have to, we have to alter their perspective and change things from a negative to a positive and look at how we as people handle bullying. And it's just, all of that's just a sticky situation. And again, it's still tough for me to have this conversation because to even think that I could be considered as an elite, but that term can also be considered as a bully. I hate the thought of it. And it makes me think like, did I bully people? Do they feel that way? Like, no, I hope not. I that, that tore you apart inside. Absolutely. And so I'm like, okay, this makes me sit back and really unpack. Did I treat other people who came from a hearing family differently? And how can I change that and make it positive? Because bullying is the last thing that I want to do with other people. I have experienced oppression by the bigger system. Why should I oppress people within my own community? Yeah, exactly what you said, bullying within our own community. And how do we as a community want to be perceived? How do we want to be represented by our leaders within our deaf community? I want to be that person that makes an impact in a positive light and educate people in the positive way, not in a bullying way. And if people do something that we don't necessarily agree with, we can have that conversation in a bright, positive light instead of trying to diminish people and get them scared to be themselves or represent who they are. And if they say the wrong thing within our community, we should be supportive of everyone and learn how to educate everyone in a nice, beautiful, positive way. And I remember a person actually did call me out and not call me out, but just pointed out the fact And they said, how did you become friends of Sarah's if you're that kind of person? And so their perception of me as an elite was, wow, you're friends with her who's completely different than you and experienced a totally different journey. And so for me, that was like, oh, I was like, huh, okay. So I used to be viewed as that, or, I mean, again, I appreciate people pointing these things out for me so that I could really honestly reflect on what my identity is and how I can change it for the better. And being friends with you does not change who I am, but for us to be able to have that open conversation and whether it's tough or not, or it could cause, you know, friction again, that's what makes our friendship such a beautiful one. Absolutely. And when that happened, I, I just see who you are and what you represent and how authentic you are to yourself and the power that you embody. And I see you in a positive way, wanting to make an impact. And I just see a beautiful woman who is strong and willing to unpack and talk about it. And that's the person I want to include in my life. And not many people are like that. 
I'm fortunate enough to have a few people in our circle of friends who are willing to really dig deep and there's nothing wrong about your past of past is of past, but it's how you acknowledge it and move on and get better and represent yourself and the community in a better way in the best light. It's what is so powerful and not easy. So I tip my hat off to you and I'm so fortunate to have you as a friend and for the listeners to see your story and your struggles and your journey of this topic. Well, not just that, but you too. I mean, you have taught me what kind of person I want to become and how to do this in a positive way the entire time. It is so easy to just think negative and quickly get what you need by going low. And you have shown me to go in a positive way and just make a difference in a good way. And I truly, truly admire that. Yeah. I hope you listeners really take the time to listen to this and have a conversation outside of this podcast with other people. And please feel free to contact us if you want to have an open dialogue and continue this conversation. Ask questions, whatever you guys need. This is a safe place. We're just two deaf women, but we have a lot of experiences and stories to tell. But there's so many other people who have similar stories and different stories. And this is a really heavy topic for mental health. And so if you need any resources regarding mental health matters, I know that the deaf community lacks a lot of resources. And I used to work as a behavioral health coordinator. So I've seen how the lack of services are for mental health. So feel free to contact us. We can help you find the correct resources for any mental health needs if you need it. And please email us at questions at what the deaf.com. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.